Welcome back to Liberty Bites on the Think Liberty Network. I'm your host, William Gatson. You can follow me personally on Twitter at William underscore Gatson. Check out my Facebook page at William Gadsden Political Commentator. Also check out Think Liberty on Facebook, Twitter, or whatever your favorite social media outlet is. Give us a follow and a like for updates on new episodes and more. We also have a Patreon now, so if you'd like to support our work, head over to patreon.com slash think liberty patrons. And of course, as always, the most helpful thing you can do, and bonus, it's free, is just share this podcast. Share the audio, share the video, whatever medium you're watching it on, because the most important thing we can do is to get the message of liberty out there. So today, to frame this episode, like I said before, I'm really sick of talking about coronavirus, but in this particular episode, I want to go over not coronavirus itself, but how coronavirus has acted as a catalyst for more control in government, for uh, more more control over your lives, and this drastic reach that we have not seen from government, certainly in my lifetime and the lifetimes of many people that are much older than me, frankly. But what do we do about it now? So when, it, when this thing first came out, when coronavirus first broke, it's a pandemic, etc., People are talking about, well, we have to flatten the curve. Okay, great. We did it. The curve is flattened. So what now? What do we do next? When can we get back to normal? But instead, you've got these people on every single level, from the level of the individual all the way up to federal le- the federal level of government. You've got big tech. You've got all of these extremely powerful organizations and entities that are saying, uh, no, we're going to go ahead and hang on to this power now that we've got it. Um, I don't think I will give it back to you. So that's what I want to talk about today and what you as an individual can do to turn this thing around. So first of all, let's walk through this, this hierarchy, if you will, of uh, people demanding control and demanding that you don't get a say in your day-to-day life. So on the individual level, you've got these quarantine Karens, you've got these social uh, social distancing warriors. I mean, they're all over social media demanding, you know, stay at home, stay safe. And of course, you know, the medical professionals saying, well, well, we came to work for you. You need to stay home for us. No, dude, you went to work because you get paid pretty well. Maybe you enjoy your job. I don't know, man. But don't demand more from us and try to guilt trip, guilt trip us into giving you more power and say over our individual lives. Anyway, you got people snitching on their neighbors for going outside or, or having friends over or whatever the case may be. Listen, nobody is saying that you have to go outside. So you don't have a right to tell other people that they have to stay inside. Listen, if you're scared of getting the coronavirus or spreading it or whatever, you can choose to stay inside as an individual. Respect the rights of those other individuals to make their own decisions for their own lives and go outside. So you've got all these people on social media. You've got these quarantine Karens and these social distancing warriors demanding that somebody else take control of not only their own lives, but the lives of others. You've got law enforcement officers, and this is a big one for me. You know, so the folks that are muffin blue line, I don't want to hear it. You've got Tons of instances coming out in the media of law enforcement officers going way overboard to enforce these not only immoral but unconstitutional regulations on the rights of the individual. You've got uh, the cops out in California that arrest that guy that was paddleboarding by himself out in the ocean. That's about as, as socially distant as you can get. But instead, they drag him into shore and they arrest him. You've got uh, this this father taking his children to the local playground, three three people or less, and they arrest him for being outside. You've got the honeymooners in Hawaii that are arrested for going out to get pizza. You've got, most recently, this guy in New York City that talked back to the cops, undercover cops, when uh, they were told to disperse, and this undercover cop beats the crap out of him. Look, man. All you got to do is say, hey, look, everybody needs to go home, seriously. But instead, uh, I think the video got taken down on YouTube, but the cop pulls a taser gun on these folks and get back, get the F back. And then when one guy stands up and says, I'm not doing anything wrong, this guy clocks him and starts beating, the, just wailing on him. How is that moral enforcement? How is that? 
on something that shouldn't even be enforced in the first place. So law enforcement officers at every level, whether you are a local PD, whether you're a sheriff's deputy, whether you are state police, whether you're federal law enforcement, you have a duty and a responsibility not to enforce these immoral and unconstitutional regulations. And for muffin blue line types and for the LEOs out there that may be listening, you do not have the ability to hide behind the, well, I'm just doing my job or I'm just following orders. Where have I heard that excuse before? It didn't work at the Nuremberg trials. It doesn't work here. I know that sounds hyperbolic, but the exact same principle is in play here. You're an individual. You've got a brain. You've got beliefs. You can think for yourself. If the laws and regulations that you are enforcing are immoral and unconstitutional, you are already breaking your oath. So have a backbone, have a spine, and stop enforcing these things, especially to the point where you're beating the crap out of some guy just because he talked back to you and bruised your ego. And then you've got these city councils, these mayors, that are stepping up and demanding and seizing more power. You've got entire towns in New Mexico that are closing down their streets and their roads into town. They're completely shutting down the town. And if you do not have proof that you live there, you are not even allowed inside of the town. What kind of weird timeline are we living in? Are we still living in America? What is going on? And then, of course, on the state level, you've got... Uh, people like Governor Whitmer of Michigan, this broad took, saw an opportunity to gain more power and took it, enforcing, enacting and enforcing some of the most draconian lockdown laws, uh, excuse me, not laws, executive orders in the country. And for those of you who aren't familiar, there was Operation Gridlock a few weeks ago where at least 200 people in 200 vehicles, I can't remember exactly what city it was in, but went into the middle of this city and parked their cars in the middle of the roads, honking horns. They've got signs. They're chanting because they want to go back to work. They want to go back to normal. They want to live their lives. So as a response to this, to Operation Gridlock, Governor Whitmer says, screw you. I'm going to extend the lockdown orders another 30 days. That isn't about public safety. That is a punishment. She is punishing those people because they had they had the audacity to have their voices heard and to exercise their First Amendment rights that are guaranteed by the Constitution. That is not about public safety. That is about control. That is about power. When you've got cops enforcing these kinds of rules, that's not about public safety. That is about control. That is about seizing power. When you've got the quarantine Karens and the social distancing warriors demanding that other people do what they want because they are afraid. That's not about public safety. That is about control, and that is about power. And then you've got these organizations on the federal level. You've got the CDC. You've got the NIH. You've got all of these federal organizations that can't make up their minds. Is this like the flu? Is this worse than the flu? Should we wear masks? Should we not wear masks? How many deaths are there? They can't figure out how to quantify and qualify the number of COVID-related deaths, whether or not we should wear masks. They, They keep going back and forth on these different things. Now, while I don't necessarily believe that any of that is intentional, it's certainly not helping the case. You've got this lag time in response. People aren't getting the right information. I don't think there's a, a intentional misinformation campaign. But if you're sending out bad information and you are at that level of responsibility, then that's certainly not helping things. And it might as well be intentional at the end of the day. Let's be honest. If you aren't helping, you need to get out of the way. But I mentioned this ray of hope that we're starting to see. So you've got, uh, for those of you who aren't aware, several days ago, I believe it was on Friday, you have a lot of protesters that armed up, they got their battle rattle on, figuratively or literally, by the way, and go into the Michigan State, uh, state, what is it, the courthouse, I suppose? Anyway, where the Michigan General Assembly meets, the legislature, state legislature meets, because they were holding a resolution on whether or not Governor Whitmer could extend her executive orders. And uh, and whether or not individuals could sue her as a result of her executive orders. 
So the Michigan people went into their own house that they pay for and addressed legislators whose salaries are paid for by Michigan tax dollars. And they demanded to have their voices heard. So the Michigan legislature responds by locking them out of the meeting room and giving. So instead, these people had their voices heard anyway. I love it. I think it's great. They were chanting. They had signs right outside the door. And I think as a direct result of that, the legislature did respond and voted uh, voted into power a resolution that said Governor Whitmer could not extend her executive orders and that she could be sued. Now, to be clear, we have already had the, uh, uh, what is it? Not the Solicitor General, uh, the, man, Bill Barr. I can't remember his official title. I'm just drawing a blank here. And Attorney General, there it is. So we've got the AG already coming out and specifying that no, the Constitution is not suspended in a time of crisis. Otherwise, what would be the point, right? So to be very clear, these protesters came out, they have a right to assembly, they have a right to protest, and they have a right to seek a redress of grievances against the government. Those are all covered under the First Amendment. So they do have a right to be there assembling, they do have a right to protest, and they do have a right to sue the governor if they feel that they uh, they have a grievance against the government. So this is just reinforcing what is already there and never should have been questioned in the first place, the U.S. Constitution. And in California, of all places, you have 3,000 people protesting to reopen the beaches. I believe it was Huntington Beach. These people want to get back to a sense of normalcy. They want to go back to normal life, the life they had before this, this pandemic panic so you got folks out there with American flags, with Gadsden flags. One guy had a Moultrie flag. Shout out to that guy. And they're demanding that their voices be heard. And I think as a result of that, you had the governor of California come out and instead of talking about extending the lockdown uh, for months, like he was talking about before, now he's talking about days. These people's voices are being heard. And I applaud them. I congratulate these people that are refusing to give in to fear, fear of the coronavirus or fear of their own government or whatever. And they are going out there and reminding the government who they work for, who the government works for. They work for them. And you've got these folks out there that, yeah, they are open carrying firearms. They are wearing their Kevlar and their body armor. More power to them, too. More power to them. This is a clear escalation. I understand that. But the the entire system of governance that we have in this country is based on the idea that there is sort of a back and forth of power between the people and their government. So if the government is seeking more power and more control over the people, the people have an absolute responsibility. I would actually argue that they have a duty to come out and escalate that as well. So if you want to open carry firearms, you want to throw your battle rattle on, go for it. And you know what? When they did that in Michigan, when they did that in Virginia, not a single shot was fired. Kentucky as well, not a single shot was fired. Nobody was hurt. But they know that the government is taking them more seriously now as a result of that. That is exactly how this is supposed to work. So what can we all do as individuals to turn this around, to get back to a new sense of normal? So a couple of, excuse me, a couple of things. First of all, yes, go out and protest. Organize. If you want to throw on your battle rattle and open carry, go for it. Have your voices heard. But on a different level, I think we need to go out of our way to show the the federal government and the state government and the local government that we don't need them for certain things. So a lot of the, a lot a lot is in the news right now about how you've got farmers having to. Uh, throw away their crops or, you know, have them rot or turn them back over into the soil in their fields because they they can't sell them to their their normal um, consumers, you know, whether it be restaurants or uh, uh, processing plants or whatever the case may be. So their products are going to rot. You've got uh, guys that raise livestock, cows and chickens and and pigs and whatever else. And because the processing plants have closed down or the meatpacking plants have closed down, It's costing these farmers more to keep these animals fed 
and they're not making any money. So now they're having to slaughter these animals and all of that meat just goes to waste. You've got dairy farmers that are pouring out literally millions of gallons of fresh milk because they don't have anybody to distribute it to. So what can you do as an individual? I want you to go onto Facebook uh, or you know whatever outlet that you have where where people in your state or local area or or are organizing. Excuse me. So we've got all of these reopen state level pages, right? We've got reopen South Carolina, reopen Tennessee, reopen Iowa, reopen California, whatever the case may be. Get on there, organize, especially those of you in rural areas. Figure out where your farmers are, what products they have what they need to sell, and buy from them directly. We don't need the FDA getting in our way. We don't need the government to tell us who we can and can't buy from. We don't need the government to tell us what we can and can't eat. So if you need to go under the table, go under the table. But organize some of this. Organize distribution. Check check in with your elderly neighbors that, that maybe can't get out of the house or are more high risk. Check in with them, see what they need, see what kind of uh, food you can get for them, and go buy directly from the source. It helps out the farmers, it helps out the people that need the food, and it shows the government that we don't need them. That is our way forward here. If if you've got some volunteers that are willing to distribute, maybe once a week, uh, they can go to the location of the farmers, pick up the order of goods, go to a neutral location, The consumers can come and pick it up, you know, pay for their gas or tip them or whatever the case may be. But we need to start coming together as communities to help one another out. That is what we are looking at right now. That is the way forward for this country in this pandemic. And when it's finally over, when the government says, all right, we flatten the curve, we're going to start shutting down all these executive orders. If we have shown them that we don't need them, we don't need them to go back to normal, to what they were before the pandemic. Continue to do these things, to continue to reach out to your neighbors, to build these local communities, to uh, buy direct from farmers or producers. Show the government that we don't need them anymore during or after this pandemic. That is what I want you to do. And of course, this episode wouldn't be totally complete if I didn't rag on social media a little bit. So you've got... uh, companies like Facebook, like YouTube, that are purposefully shutting down content or shutting down pages or shutting down groups that are uh, focused around organizing these different kinds of events, these protests or uh, organizing agorism, like I'm talking about buying directly from the source, uh, under the table, if you will. They're shutting down uh, groups that are looking out for for self-defense and self-protection, communal protection. Um, Because it's, quote-unquote, against the law. Well, no, it's not against the law. It's against executive orders. It's against unconstitutional, immoral regulations on the part of the government. But that's not going to stop them from doing everything they can from keeping us uh, from organizing. So if you're focused around Facebook and your group got uh, shut down or whatever the case may be, go on to Minds, go on to MeWe, uh, create a phone tree, Whatever you need to do to organize, if your efforts get shut down, don't stop. Don't give up. Keep pushing. If we want this country to come back together, we need to build the country that we want ourselves. And that starts at the community level. It starts with civil disobedience. It starts with agorism. It starts with with protest. That is how we move forward here. So, again, I applaud the folks across the country that are going out. They're making their voices heard. I applaud the people that are already coming together as communities to help one another out. Let's continue this. Let's make this a movement even after all of this settles down. That's really all I've got for today. Thanks for listening and join me next week to become more liberty-centered with us. I'm William Gadsden with Think Liberty. 